Hey everybody, it's Baseball435, and I'm back to get started on the official tutorial on how to use Nitronet. Um, in this first tutorial, I'm just going to get up a cert, or I'm just going to get a basic server and client started to give you an understanding of how they can communicate very easily. Um, so by the end of this video, you should have a basic understanding of it. Um, but to get started, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open up your IDE or whatever you're going to use and just create a new Java project. Um, I already did that right now, uh, but just create a new Java project. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to the GitHub page for Nitronet and uh, I'll have that in the description, you can just click on the link or it's up here at the top. Um, once you're here, you're going to want to download either the source completely or to make it easier on yourself, if you go into the bin folder and you just click on nitronet.jar, it will download it by going to raw. So if you click on raw, it should download it for you. Um, just click on keep or just download it. And once that's done downloading, you're going to want to import it into your actual project. So Wait for this for one second. Um, all right, it's now finished downloading, so I'm just going to show it in the folder. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take this jar and we're going to have to import it into the actual project itself. Um, so first, uh, create a new folder in your project by just right-clicking on the project and going to New, and then go to Folder, and you can type in whatever you want. I'm going to type in Lib and make sure it's in the directory of your project. Um, and then once Lib is created, go to nitronet.jar and just drop it into the folder. And you're going to do copy files in that link. Um, so now you will see nitronet.jar is in the project. Um, so from there, now we need to import it, import it into our project so that we can use the code and the different uh, methods that it gives us. So right click on your project again and go down to properties. And then from here, go to Java build path and then go to libraries and then click on add jars. And then you want to want to go to the lib for uh, or the jar for Nitronet. So just click OK and then click OK again. Um, so you'll see it's a reference library now. Now we can actually use that to get started working with um, Nitronet. <clears throat> so from here, what we're going to want to do is we're going to have to create a server and also a client. Um, so it's very basic um, to get started with it. I'm going to create two separate packages for uh, I'm going to take, create two, two separate packages for the server and the client. So the first one I'm just going to do is client, create a new client package, and create a new server package. So the server is going to be in the server, and the client's going to be in the client. Um, so for here, we'll create the server first. Um, so create a new class in the server package, and we're going to call it server starter. And you can cr click on public static void main if you want, or you can type it in, but I'm just going to click it to make it go quicker. Um, and that'll generate our main method. Um, so from in here, I'm just going to create a new instance of server starter and I'm just going to start working with it from the actual instance itself. So I'm going to create the constructor service starter uh, and from in here we're going to start creating the server and setting it up and connecting and allowing clients to connect to it. Um, so the first thing I want to do is you're going to create a new server object. So we're going to create an instance variable called server which is the type server and that server object is what Nitronet is giving you to allow a server to be started and used. So you can import that into your uh, class. And then from here, we can actually start creating the server. Um, so to get started, it's very simple. All you have to do is server equals new server. And now, right, right now, you're going to uh, set the port for the TCP and UDP. Um, so I'm just going to set them to the same thing. Uh, and you can set them to whatever you want to. Um, but if you plan on making it so that computers outside of your network can connect to it, you need to make sure to port forward. Um, now, that's a completely separate topic, but there's a ton of tutorials online um, to show how to do that. But if you want to connect to just computers within your network, then you don't have to worry about that. Um, so I'm just going to do that. And now what you're going to do is you're going to surround it with a try catch. Um, and that's in case the server can't start. Um, that would happen if you already have another server running in the background, it can't create on the same port. Um, so you can't have two things bound to the same exact port um, for TCP. So now that that's set up, uh, we can pretty much just see if it's started. Um, we can do that by just creating a simple if statement, if server dot is connected, then print out server has started. And now your server is officially started and running. Um, so we can try this by just simply running the running the uh, class and you'll see server has started. Um, so now from there it's just going to be waiting for clients to 
come and connect to it. Um, currently, there are no clients to connect to it. So how about we start making the client? Um, so in the client package, we're going to create a new class called client starter, um, just like the server starter. And I'm going to create the main in there as well. Um, and now this is going to create the client side for us. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new instance of client starter again so that we keep it local as an instance and not a static. Um, just what I prefer. Really, it doesn't matter. Um, but from here, I'm going to create the constructor of client starter. And just like we have the uh, server object in the server, we're going to have to have the client object in the client. Um, so we're going to create a new client instance. And we're just going to call the variable client. And you're going to want to import that as well from NitroNet. So import client. And from here, we're just going to create the new client. So when you're creating a new client object, the first parameter is going to be the IP address that you want to connect to. Um, so I mean, you can type in a no IP address. You can type in um, a local IP address, an external IP address. For us, I'm going to type in localhost, um, or I can type in uh, 127.0.0.1, which is the same thing as localhost, whatever IP you want to connect to. But I'm just going to keep it as a localhost for now. After that, you're going to want to type in the TCP port that the server is running on. So in this case, it's 1337. If you change that and the server started, they want to set that to the correct port as well. And then you're also going to set the UDP port, which is also 1337. Um, so now that that's started, uh, we can connect to the server. So by doing that, all you have to do is just do client.connect. And, oops. <clears throat> and that will try and connect to the client if it's up and running. Um, and then what we can do to see if it's connected is we can just do if client dot is connected, just like the server, system dot out dot print line client, or I'll just say client connected. And now we can test this both ways. So first we'll not start the server and we'll just run it normally. Um, and you'll see that it won't connect at all. It'll just throw an error because there is no connection waiting from that IP address on that port. Um, so it'll throw an error. Um, so now let's run the actual server first. So we'll run the server and now server has started. Now we'll run the client and you will see that the client has connected. Um, now currently the server doesn't actually see that the client has connected. It does in the background, but it doesn't alert you to that fact. Um, so now I'm actually going to show that to the next video. This is just a basic video of setting up a server and client. You can see it was done in four lines on the client and I mean the same thing on the server just with try catches so really two or three lines um, so you can see that NitroNet does allow servers and client communications to be started very simply um, and very easily um, so in the next tutorials I will be showing you how to uh, see when a client has connected on the server and send information back and forth between that so thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video